actually have invited um, four of your peers up here to talk about their businesses and what they're doing and the opportunity that they see in the market. So do you want to um, go ahead, Oscar, and start, uh, introduce yourself and we'll go down the line. Oscar Rodriguez with Aegis Innovators. I'm John Stipula with Dynamic Consulting. I'm Joseph Landis from Nerdio. And Manish with Tinkei. Great. So, um, so let's start with you, Oscar. And I thought maybe you could talk a little bit about um, the business that you're in and, um, and what you've seen as success with security. Sure. Um, you, you know, well, I, I think everybody understands what Microsoft 365 is and it's, it, it, the security behind it is really the key factor for implementing and bringing in the business that you're going to need. So the, the security piece is what, you, what the key factor is to eliminate the whole pricing question that everybody has. But, uh, you know, to our success, it's, it's, it's just been really Office 365, Microsoft 365, and that whole implementation. And so, t so talk a little bit about what you've seen as the opportunity with your customers to go be able to talk about this. So experience. the opportunities that we've seen is, is you know, you're, you're taking a look at the whole prospect of, of growing our business through Office 365. That's the core value of everything that comes through. Once we bring in the licensing, that, that brings in all these extraordinary business outcomes, the cybersecurity behind it. You know, we develop the, 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 the business behind it. So it enables that extraordinary business um, outcomes, right? So it helps us develop, de deliver those things. Do you have any great examples of um, customer stories? Sure. So the most recent one is, um, you know, I went and visited a, a bank, and in actuality, that the, the bank that we visited was from a partner. We were helping a partner, and this partner came to us and said, "Well, they're they're on E3 and they're stuck with E3, and they don't want to go on, on going to Microsoft 365 because they see the the fifty-seven dollar price is way too much and and whatnot." And I'm like, "Well, that's okay, no problem. What what we can do is is we'll we'll go in and we'll talk." So I went in there, and the key factor here is, is also talk about getting the key people in, involved in the business, right? So you get the key people talking about in, involved in the business. So you, once I, once I brought, brought, brought the, the CEO of the business, he, he, taught, he started talking about teams and how he started to use teams and everything else. And I'm like, well, that's great, you know, but, but you know, your on-prem scenario has all the protection of your data already, right? Because you're a bank, you obviously have that, that protection, but now you're bringing in that data into teams and you're in the E3, you've lost that that security now. So let's talk about the security and how we're gonna secure your team environment. So then we started talking about security and everything else and he's like, oh, well, how do I protect myself in that world? And I'm like, well, that's easy. You go to Microsoft 365 E5. And he's like, well, how much is that gonna be? I'm like, I don't know, but who cares? You gotta secure yourself. And so that, that after, at the end of that meeting, it, it was that whole thing. It was like, oh, well then it's a no-brainer. Let's just move to Microsoft 365 E5. And then we started talking about phones and everything else. And I'm like, well, the phones comes in together with everything else. So let's just move your phones as well. So there, there you go. So that was an instant 90, 90 licenses of Microsoft 365. It's awesome. It's a good story. So you happy you, you're, uh, you've kind of focused your business around Microsoft 365 then? Uh, yeah, I do, actually. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we do a lot of training. We do a lot of that. So yeah, I, yeah, it's, yep. Yeah. Awesome, great. Well, let's, let's, let's move on and talk about Dynamics, right? So, um, so this is John, he's from um, Dynamics Consulting. So do you want to tell us a little bit about your business? I know when you and I spoke, um, you talked about how you started really um, doing AX way back in the day, right? Yep. AX. Mm. Back in what day was that? Uh, it was maybe 10 years ago, yeah. 10 years ago? Yep. And, um, and now you've moved on. So you want to talk a little bit about yeah, your sure. journey Thanks, through that? Yeah, sure. Um, yeah. You know, we were, I was primarily an AX partner. I kind of got drug into it from a customer, and um, <laughs> like most of us probably. And, but about five years ago, you know, I was in a meeting, and someone from Microsoft was, said you can't be a one-trick pony. You know, AX alone is great, but you really need to adopt more of the platform. So we... You moved our cheese a little bit, and we followed, and uh, we, we picked up CRM. It was a different business model for us, so it, it was a little bit of a growing pain, but now with Dynamics 365, it turns out that every one of our ERP customers is also a CRM customer, which has been amazing for us. 
You know, so just listening to what Microsoft had to say, it turns out that happened to be what our customers needed. And you know, just with that addition, we've in the last 12 months added seven figures worth of CSP ARR. You know, and so I'm very happy to to have that additional revenue, obviously. Um, <laughs> and then and that has funded and and helped us with our overall business growth. Not quite the 126 percent that that showed, but um, we're you know we we've done about 60 percent growth year over year, every year profitable growth for the last six years. And a lot of that has been just um, following what you tell us customers want. That's awesome. It's awesome. And so we're, when you look out at the next two or three years, where do you see some of the biggest growth opportunities? Yeah, for us, um, you know, biggest growth opportunities have been to get past selling to the IT department. ERP is an expense a lot of times. Maybe even CRM is a tool and it's expense that needs to be upgraded. And we've been working hard with Power BI and AI to once we have this data in Dynamics or in SQL or in somewhere that we can do something with it, we've been able to help this, our customers build tools to sell to their customers. And so we've really fueled some growth getting outside of the expense budget and moving to a new uh, line of business for our customers, our revenue driver. Those budgets are 10 times as big and the customer can't wait, our customer can't wait to sign because we've been able to help customers you know, analyze spare parts data so they can then predict maintenance failures and sell spare parts as a subscription to their customer instead of waiting for that, sale, that, that spare part order to come in. Well, we have a lot more in store for you on Dynamics 365, yeah, so <laughs> we're going to continue to have your business grow like that. Thanks, John. So, um, so Joseph. Joseph worked at Microsoft. We worked together. Um, he was, worked at Microsoft for 23 years. And, um, and then recently um, went through detox and, <laughs> and started at Nerdio. And so... <laughs> So, um, you know, so Joseph, you want to talk to us a little bit about, um, you know, what did you see in the market that made you decide to make that move? Yeah, absolutely, Gabrielle. It's great to be here today. I was really uh, trying to understand how managed service providers, how MSPs could move to Azure and what were really the challenges around MSPs moving to, to build a cloud practice in Azure. And I saw three primary challenges that they were having. The first was that it's expensive. If you don't have a person in your practice who really understands Azure and knows how to architect and manage an Azure solution, it's gonna be a real expense to your business because you either have to hire someone from the outside or retrain your existing staff. The second challenge folks were having was that Azure is complicated. It's hundreds of services across IaaS, PaaS, and SaaS. So for an MSP to really understand how to build a cloud practice in Azure is a little bit challenging. And then the third piece that we saw that was a challenge was that MSPs felt that it's risky to move to Azure. Why risky? Because MSPs are very used to the on-premises world. And now we're saying, welcome to the world of consumption. Welcome to a world where you are going to charge your customers based on how much they consume. We felt that at Nerdio, we could solve those challenges for MSPs, so I swallowed hard and I left Microsoft after 23 years, and I went to Nerdio. It's, it's exciting, it's exciting, because you are serving a market that, um, it, you know, I've always wanted to see us serve. I don't know, if those of you, not, you probably don't know, but it was probably about eight years ago, um, I was the product manager for this product, Windows Intune, and the whole goal for Windows Intune originally was to service the SMB managed service provider. And, um, and that was what we built it for. Um, but then as soon as we started to get some traction in the market, like everything else at Microsoft, it started to go up and up and up and up and become an enterprise product. And so, so then we once again abandoned that space where I thought that was the biggest opportunity. So I'm really excited to see Nerdio kind of step in and, um, and help our partners to, um, to make, make that move. And not just m managing Azure, right? I mean, there's more to it than that. Yeah, there is. So we've made investments, Gabriella, in four primary areas. The first is that with Nerdio for Azure, you can deploy a complete IT environment in Azure in about two hours and without the need for an engineer. We've made an investment in pricing technology to make it a lot easier for an MSP to understand the true cost of purchasing Azure and being able to offer it to your customers. 
The third investment area is management. So once you have deployed the Azure environment, the day-to-day -day management tasks, onboarding a user, offboarding a user, changing VMs, we've applied automation to, and you could do all these tasks in three clicks or less. And then finally, the fourth investment area is optimization. Like the electricity in your home, you don't want Azure to be running 24 by seven all the time. So if you have a server or a desktop that doesn't need to be powered on with Nerdio for Azure, it will automatically, through our patented auto scaling technology, scale down the resources and then scale them back up when they're needed. Group policy. <laughs> group policy, yes. <laughs> in old terms. Um, and so, um, so, you know, like I, I, I mentioned, uh, you know, we're struggling with how do you make VDI something that anybody can actually use because everybody would rather have a virtual desktop and now we have the Windows virtual desktop and you can help a managed service provider actually deliver and manage that as well, right? We absolutely can, Gabrielle. I think there's really, I'd leave you probably with two huge opportunities for everyone in the room who's a managed service provider. The first, as Gabriella said, is the recently released service for Microsoft Windows Virtual Desktop. Now you could use true Windows 10 to be able to spin up a virtual desktop and you could do that in 60 seconds with the Nerdio for Azure platform. And the other uh, exciting opportunity for partners here is really migrating, as Gabriella talked about even at Inspire, Windows Server 2008 to the cloud and being able to take advantage of the three years of extended security updates. You could do that as well with Nerdio for Azure. It's awesome. It's awesome. So thanks, Joseph. That's Thank uh, amazing. Love the love the technology. Um, you'll hear more. You'll hear me talk about that more, a lot more. Um, so so next, Manish, do you want to talk a little bit about Think AI and what brought you to this opportunity? Yeah, absolutely. So we started with Microsoft um, Channel through IMCP. I met Justin, and he guided me that let's do education MCC events on Office 365. Got started with that. We're doing application development on cloud, like Cloud Apps, SharePoint project. But then re recently, like three years back, we started focusing on Power BI. So data was the opportunity. So the data was the focus, and we were really good at that. So that's when we rebranded, saying that, okay, we are good in data, can we do AI? And we found, founded the Think AI. So really, the goal is to be trusted strategic partner for our enterprise thought leaders. But when the thought leaders have these complex business problems to drive innovation, reduce cost, or drive value, we can bring data and AI expertise. So that's what we are doing right now. You make business intelligent. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, um, so has, it has it helped you to expand your business? Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, two practices, right? So data is one. So we see a huge gap between what enterprise have in terms of data visualization or reports yep. or even Power BI dashboard. So that there is a gap in both data and AI. And we are actually also focusing on industry like healthcare and manufacturing only. So on data, we have a simple package to deploy quickly. So it allows us to even serve a small business as well as mid-sized companies. So we are having faster uh, close ratio uh, so it's growing. I mean, we have grown three times in last year itself. And uh, on AI, again, for the mid-size or startup, mid-size companies or startup, they know the problem statement. So we'll help them with custom AI. But with a small business, it's hard for them to keep money aside for AI. So we are leading with smart apps like uh, chatbots, conversational AI. Yeah, conversational AI. So, um, so it's great what you've done, which is to um, really get very specific on your technology um, capability and double down on data, because when you can pull together a customer's data state, then you can start to really reason over it really well. And then you focus specifically in manufacturing and healthcare so that you can be very repeatable and still have a very good profitable business even when you go to a very small business. Mm -hmm. right. And so, um, so when you look out in ahead, what do you think is, um, well, actually you were telling me what, the, what your growth has been, right? Yeah. It's been yep. pretty phenomenal. Right. You want to share? Yeah, I think, uh, as I said, in the last three, uh, one year we have gone three times. And uh, I, I do want to share one customer story yeah. because uh, it's in their growth you can see the impact of technology. And that is, 
uh, at AMCB SoCal meeting, we have uh, our board member, Fred Cooper. So he says to me, hey, I have this startup CEO who is looking to have ML done. So can you help? We are like, yes, we can definitely talk. So when we talked, this company had an idea of developing headsets for detecting certain medical conditions. So they are detecting or capturing inaudible frequencies and then based on ML, they will detect certain medical conditions. So me with my partner Dave, we were able to go and implement that ML solution. Yeah. And with that, they completed their POC, MVP, and show it to investors. And their valuation went from 1x to 4x. And now they are getting funded. So that's the So that's, growth. that's pretty phenomenal. You've been able to help your customer go from 1x to 4x. Yes, yes. Yeah, that's, that's business value. That's strong business value. <laughs> so, so thank you, Manish. And so, um, so when we think about the, um, the portfolio, when I talked a little bit before about how it's starting to come back together again um, and something that you can sell together, John, do you want to talk a little bit about how you've been able to actually extend even beyond Dynamics 365? Yeah, absolutely, now? because like you were saying earlier, as Microsoft was siloed, I think we were also singularly focused, but as you guys have uh, brought your messaging together and your stack and your technology together, you know, we've had to follow that uh, lead a bit more and get Azure gold competency and office gold competency. But not just because you're saying it, our, it turns out our customers also want it. You know, the, the one commercial partner strategy has been amazing for us because we're in there talking dynamics, they start to know us, we're on a year long project. Oh, and they have failing servers or they have disparate data. Well, then we can introduce them to Dynamics 365 Insights, or we can show them IoT and connected field service, or you know, we can move these aging servers you know, into Azure. And for us, it's been, it's been amazing. We, I mean, it's definitely fueling our growth. Our customers feel that they're getting so much more value out of it, and it's a cleaner message that they're, it's coming from one partner that they trust instead of um, getting mixed signals and mixed salespeople calling them. So for us, uh, one commercial partner all the way. Awesome, thank you. Well, thank you all, appreciate it.